Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen. I'm gonna do like a quick little update really quickly because I haven't posted in like four or five months. Um, so if you don't wanna hear about that, I'll put like a timestamp in the comments so you can go ahead and skip to the story. Um, so oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> I am 20 weeks pregnant and that is why I quit posting. I had planned on like switching up my content. I didn't want to do like drama and commentary as much anymore unless it was like something that I felt really passionate about. Um, and I wanted to start switching to things that just made me happy and gave me like purpose kind of. Uh, YouTube was like my only hobby and I did it consistently for a couple years and I loved it and then I just got burnt out and the negativity that comes with always talking about drama but then I didn't really know like where I fit in or like what I should even post or what kind of content I even wanted to make so then I decided that the most I like the most YouTube videos I watch is always true crime and paranormal type things and things that like research is involved into making the video you don't just sit down and talk about drama those are the kind of things that make me happy. Um, that's what I like to do. So I decided that that's like what I wanted to do. Um, my son just started school. He's in pre-K. He goes three days a week. Um, so I decided that, you know, when he's at school and I'm done cleaning the house, like why not do something that makes me uh, like fulfilled? Uh, kind of like having, you know, a personal goal, something to hold you accountable kind of, something to look forward to. I don't know. Uh, basically I miss filming and doing YouTube and wanted to try something for me so sorry my dogs are like whining so if this gets like you know 20 views I don't even care anymore I've never cared too much about that kind of thing but it does make you feel good when people are watching your content and liking it but I feel like people get caught up in the numbers and stuff and I just want to do something that makes me happy and post you know content that I like and that I would watch so that's what I'm gonna do so if you want to watch it yay if you don't that's okay too um yeah so anyway we're gonna get into this story it just happened like a week and a half ago so it's pretty new and it's extremely upsetting and I'm honestly kind of shocked at the lack of coverage it's gotten um news channels and stuff are talking about it but not really like youtubers or like individual people and it's really it's really messed up. So anyway, let's get into it. So today we're going to be talking about Matthew Taylor Coleman. He's a 40 year old man who lived on the outskirts of Santa Barbara and taught um, like surfing. He was a surfer instructor. Um, actually, I posted a video about this on my TikTok and a lady commented and her children were taught by this man for a little bit of time. He was well trusted by people in society. This woman, she trusted him with her children. Uh, his wife trusted him. To the outside world he seemed like a very good well-rounded man no one ever had any suspicions or doubts about him as far as like everything that's come out so far and he just seemed like a a surfer instructor guy who lives in california chill like nothing to it that's it so on august 7th 2021 which was like a week and a half ago his wife whose name in like the paperwork is ac so that's what we're going to call her his wife ac calls the police and she says you know, my husband and my kids, we were all supposed to go on a camping trip together and he took my van and he's gone with our children. I don't know where they are. And she was adamant about the fact that she was not worried about the safety of her children being with him, that she like didn't know what was going on and if something bad had happened, but she had no fear of her husband with her children. That was not a thought in her mind, but that he wouldn't answer her phone calls or her texts, that she had no idea where he was and she was kind of freaking out and just wanted to know where her family was. But the least of her concerns was the safety of her children as far as her husband goes. So because of everything that she said to the police, they did not file any missing like person reports. They kind of just took a note of it and you know, we're gonna be on the lookout and see what happens. Like, let's see if your family comes home before we make this into a huge thing. So that night at 8 p.m., Matthew and his two children, he has a two-year-old and a 10-month-old, checked into a hotel in Rosarito, Mexico. I'm really sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, but yeah, so they checked into a hotel, didn't have any reservation or anything. He just walked in, said he needed a room for the night. They gave him the key, he went to the room. So the next day, August 8th, his wife, AC, calls the police again. She's even more concerned, and so they finally do a missing persons report, a bolo, like, 
where are where's her family um the police also asked her like did you have an argument was there a fight were things going on like what like is there a reason that maybe he left and she said no that everything seemed perfectly fine there was no fights no arguments like everything was totally fine before all of this happened so the police asked AC, like, hey, pull up your find my iPhone. Let's see if we can track him. And sure enough, they did. And he was at the hotel, the Rosierto Mexico Hotel. And um, that was his last known location until later on in the story. Because now that they know Matthew isn't even in California anymore, the case is turned over to the FBI. And the FBI and the police there in California decided to work together and like, let's try to figure out what is happening. They let Border Patrol know what was going on. And now you have three different entities all trying to figure out where the hell this family is. So um, CCTV is found like later on. And at 3 a.m., Matthew is seen leaving with his two children in the van and he comes back three hours later alone by himself. There's no kids with him anymore. At 7.30 a.m., a rancher and his dog were outside working and the dog came across the two lifeless bodies just in the middle of nowhere. Um, and the worker, you know, walked over and saw what the dog saw and immediately reported it to the police. The police came out and like, you know, checked the scene and found the two children, a two-year-old and a 10-month-old who had been stabbed to death multiple multiple times so august 9th at 9 30 a.m matthew checks out of the hotel and makes his way back to come back through america he gets to the border and the border patrol is already aware that they're looking for this man so they thought it was him and they decided to search his vehicle and alert the um the police the fbi that there weren't any children with him and they identified that this was who they were looking for uh, they found blood in his car and then he was taken and put in fbi custody so at this point everyone puts two and two together that the two children who had passed away and then this man that was their kids this is the family that was being sought after they had found the man and now they wanted to know what the hell happened um matthew didn't even have a car seat for the 10 month old baby he put that baby in a box to drive all the way to mexico to the location to where that baby would no longer have a life literally in a box so matthew agrees to do a recorded confession and he basically says that his children were going to grow up to be monsters because his wife had given them serpent demon dna blood and that the only way to stop the end of the world was to take their lives and that he knew it was wrong but it had to be done he referenced QAnon and Illuminati conspiracies and he just did not seem to be, I mean, th these are like ridiculous claims and some people might say he's using these things as like insanity, but even if that's the case, like he's still getting in trouble either way. And it's like unbelievable that he said it with such conviction, like he truly believes that what he did was for the good of the world. He had used a fishing spear to repeatedly stab both of his children until they passed away. And then he dropped the weapon, which he told the police where the bodies and the weapons were, which corroborated with the story of, you know, where the rancher had found them. And obviously, you know, they put everything together. And then, you know, they have to tell the wife, which I haven't heard anything about that, like officially, but I would assume that when she got that phone call that her whole world changed she said with such like certainty that my children are safe with him unless there's something else that happens like he's not gonna hurt my children they're safe with their dad and she truly believed that they were okay so to get the call that not only have you lost both your children but you've lost your husband as well because he is not who you thought he was and like how he could do that and it's, just, it's it makes it so much more sad like obviously it's sad regardless but just to know like she felt that that trust and lost everything overnight basically um but that's what we have so far he's being arraigned on august 31st i read that they want to keep him in a prison in mexico i don't know if maybe he'll serve time there and then come back to america i don't know about the death penalty in mexico i don't, I don't know how any of that's going to work but i am going to follow the case and see what happens and then do updates as that happens 
Um, but that is what has happened so far. Um, if there's any other cases you guys want me to cover, let me know. The next one I'm doing is another case that I feel like is worse than Chris Watts, but didn't get like hardly any coverage or anyone talking about it at all. And it was a year ago, which is shocking. Um, but I feel like that should be talked about as well. So yeah, I just want to do cases that aren't extremely talked about, at least not yet, or aren't in general. Um, and just bring light to, you know, more, more things than what people, you know, usually talk about, like your Ted Bundy. Um, but anyway, this is extremely sad. It was heartbreaking to read. I cried the first time I read the first article when I saw it. So I really wanted to discuss it and share it with you guys. And I hope you have a good rest of your day and that you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.